Hi there! Welcome to Family Virtual Storytime. Today we're going to be reading stories that have sunlight, shadows, and colors. And that goes well with our two surprises coming up as well. What will they be? You'll just have to wait and see. But first, let's get started reading our first story today. Our first colorful and shadow story of the morning is titled, Shadows. So let's see what happens with these two characters. Searching for shadows, we run, <laughs> hop, and stare. A lot of shadows are here and there. Wow, look at all the colors in the illustrations. Beautiful. Dragonfly shadows zip and pop. Running horse shadows never stop. Wow, look at that. Our shadowy shapes shift as we dance. Leg kick, leg kick, prance, prance, prance. They must be on the beach. My friend catches my shadow's hand. Hand in shadow, we walk the sand. A ball and its shadow fall and meet, rolling to my shadow's feet. We outline shadows with a piece of chalk, but later they've moved on the hot sidewalk. Isn't it funny to see how shadows move throughout the day? I think that involves the sunlight. A man keeps a shadow under his hat. Look, there he is. An umbrella opens, a shadow falls, splat. Clouds move in, sponging shadows away. Oh no, it started to rain. But the shadows return with the sun, so let's play. Hand shadows hop through the tall green grass. Underwater shadows follow for fast bass. Look at all those fish swimming. Toe shadows walk the gravelly creek. Sudden scary shadows make us shriek. Oh no, it's a crab. Bird shadows skim over shrubs and rocks. And sundial shadows turn like clocks. Tree shadows make cool spots to rest. And I think I like these shadows best. And that's the end of shadows. Wasn't that a fun book seeing all those colorful cast shadows? Well, speaking of cast shadows, we're gonna let you in on our first surprise today. We're gonna to be going to another field trip to the Lee Yaki Woods and Art Museum. They have some exhibitions going on all about glass and the colorful shadows that they make. Well, let's see what's happening at the Art Deco Glass. Now through Sunday, June 5th, the Woodson Art Museum presents two new exhibitions, Molten, 30 Years of American Glass, and Art Deco Glass from the Hutchhausen Collection. People have been using glass for thousands of years, making it one of the oldest and most durable materials in the world. Art glass is made to be admired like a painting or a sculpture, but can also be functional like a decorative vase from flowers or a stained glass window. Artists can create glass that's silly, serious, and surprising. Which kind do you like best? A hundred years ago, artists embraced designs featuring patterns with bold, clean lines and geometric shapes in a movement known as Art Deco. In addition to the geometric designs found in Art Deco, there were also designs being created that featured natural subjects like birds and animals and plants, but in a really stylized, simplified way, just like the parrot on the base here. During your visit, search the galleries for interesting shadows, unexpected designs, and animal subjects depicted in glass objects on view. Pick up an activity guide to go on a scavenger hunt, learn about Art Deco design, and sketch your art glass ideas. Visit Art Park, the museum's interactive gallery, to think and make like a glass artist. Stack and embellish plastic forms to make glass-like sculpture. Create colorful patterns to decorate paper vessel constructions and enjoy games and books inspired by artwork on view. We 
hope you visit soon so you can find your favorite glass artwork. Our second book today is Red, Red, Red. What could be so red, red, red? Hmm, let's find out. Oh, look, we're in a cute little neighborhood. Red, red, red. One summer evening, Turtle is rushing through town. Look at him, Russian, Russian. Where are you going in such a hurry, Turtle? Asked Mrs. Raccoon. I'm off to see something red, 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 says Turtle, without stopping. Something red, Mrs. Raccoon says. Oh, is it my red roses? No, 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 says Turtle. It's not your red roses. Well, then what is it, asks Mrs. Raccoon, following Turtle right past Rabbit's grocery store. But per Turtle doesn't answer. Where are you going in such a hurry, friends, asks Rabbit. Turtle is off to see something red, said Mrs. Raccoon, but he's in such a hurry he has no time to tell me what it is. So I'm going to go see for myself. Look, they're following them. Maybe it's my red tomatoes, or my red cherries, or even my red watermelon, says Rabbit. No, no, no. It's not your tomatoes, or cherries, or watermelon, Turtle says, hurrying on. But what is it then, says Rabbit, getting in line behind Mrs. Raccoon, and Turtle passing their neighbor goat who's collecting his laundry. But Turtle doesn't answer. So Goat calls out, where are you going in such a hurry, neighbors? We don't know, says Rabbit. Turtle is off to see something red, but he's in such a hurry, he has no time to tell us what it is. Well, can't it be my red socks? Asks neighbor Goat. No, 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 says Turtle, without missing a step. It is not your red socks. But what is it, begs neighbor goat, as he falls in behind rabbit, Mrs. Raccoon, and turtle, just so they are passing their neighbor Fox's house, where she's painting the roof. But turtle doesn't answer. Then Fox calls out, where are you going in such a hurry, neighbors? We just don't know, says goat. Turtle is off to see something red, but he's in such a hurry he has no time to tell us what it is. Maybe it's the roof of my house, says Fox. I'm painting it red. No, 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 says Turtle. It's not your red roof. And he hurries on. Then what is it, asks Fox, as she falls in line behind Goat, Rabbit, Mrs. Raccoon, and Turtle. She's curious, too. And then they all pass the firehouse. What's going on here, cries the firefighter. Where are you going in such a hurry? We don't know. We are all following Turtle, says Fox. He's off to see something red, and he's such a hurry, he has no time to tell us what it is. Wow, look at all of those neighbors following Turtle. Where are they going to go see? The firefighters grow alarmed. Something red? Something red. And they fall in line behind Fox and Goat and Rabbit and Mrs. Raccoon and Turtle, just as they all come to the lake and see Captain Dog on his ship next to the pier. Where are you going in such a hurry? Captain Dog cries from his ship. We don't know. Turtle is off to see something red and he has no time to tell us what it is. It must be my ship, says Captain Dog. Its bottom is red and has a red smokestack and a red life preservers. No, 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 says Turtle. It is not your ship. He hurries on. Where could they possibly be going? Then what is it? The surprised Captain Dog says as he falls in line behind the firefighters, Fox, Goat, Rabbit, Mrs. Raccoon, and Turtle. I would like to know. But Turtle doesn't answer him. And they keep all climbing up a hill to the lake. Look at all of them following Turtle. Here we are, says Turtle, taking a deep breath at the top of the hill. Wow, they finally reached where they're going. But 
I don't see anything red, do you? Where is red, 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 cries the fire fire. I see nothing red here. Goat, fox, rabbit, and Mrs. Raccoon join him. Why were we in such a rush, Turtle? But look, look over there, whispers Turtle. The red, red, red is... Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, sighs the neighbors together. It's the sunset. Yes, it's the beautiful red sunset, says Turtle, and all of them turn to enjoy it. Wow, look at that beautiful red sunset over the lake. Wow, aren't we glad that we joined Turtle on his little travel to see what was red? It's gorgeous. And all of them stayed until the big yellow moon appears in the evening sky. Perfect, says Turtle. And he takes the time to enjoy it with them all. And that's the end of Red, Red, Red. Wasn't that a great adventure that Turtle took us on? Wow, it's so fun to think of the sun rising in the morning and then setting in the evening and causing such a beautiful color to appear. Well, this relates to our upcoming Craft It, where we're gonna show you our next project for the month of April. This grab and go also involves color and it involves you bringing your colorful project out to the sun. Well, let's see what happens. Hi there, welcome to Craft It. Today we're gonna to be talking about our April grab and go, which is a shadow art program. It's gonna be fun for you to be able to create a butterfly or a turtle. Now, if you're younger, you might want to head towards the turtle project. And if you're a little bit older, the butterfly. Well, what comes in your grab and go kits? Some fun materials, including the cardboard, a template, your colorful cellophane and directions. And make sure to cut out all of your templates to be able to trace over your colorful cellophane, cut them out, and then you'll use your glue stick to glue on. And once you've finished your project, take it outside and watch the sun shine through it and cast a beautiful, colorful shadow on the ground. Well, I hope you enjoy creating your shadow art grab and go kit and can pick them up at any MCPL location throughout the month of April. And our last story today is also about some shadows and a cat, maybe a mouse. It's called Boris and the Wrong Shadow. Let's see what happens to Boris. Boris has just woken up from his catnap. He smiles as he remembers his dream, swimming in a gigantic bowl of creamy milk. Yum. Now that he's wide awake, Boris is feeling funny. Not funny, ha ha, but funny, strange. Hmm. Boris has a feeling that things aren't quite as they should be. But for some reason, Boris appears to have the wrong shadow. That's not a cat's shadow, is it? That looks like a mouse. He has no idea why. But Boris decides not to let a silly thing like this spoil an otherwise pleasant afternoon. As it turns out, Boris's afternoon is not at all pleasant. The other cats snicker. <laughs> And little flossy fluffball squeaks at him. Oh, that's not very nice. And the beaky birds, they don't even bother to look up from their splashy bath because they just think he's a mouse. Oh no. Boris is starting to wonder if he's actually a mouse after all. He does like the odd nibble of cheese, but no. Boris is definitely 100% cat. Just a cat with a silly mouse shadow. Hmm. Boris thinks that if he had any other shadow, like perhaps something with a little more wow, like an elephant, everything would be hunky-dory. But it isn't the least 
bit hunky-dory, not in the slightest. However, even gloomy cats need to stretch their legs occasionally. Perfect timing too, as this is when Boris spies something very interesting indeed. His own shadow. Wow, that looks like his shadow, doesn't it? Look at it, it's skipping past him. Without a care in the world, Boris decides to follow it. He slinks snoopily under there, he tip tappy toes over here, and being ever so shushy, shush, and quiet as a... What? It's Vernon! Boris asks very politely if Vernon has taken his shadow. But of course, Vernon says, no, not exactly. But Boris thinks that someone's telling a tiny lie. Vernon gulps and says, well, while you were snoozing, your shadow got bored and fidgety and wandered off. I found the shadow and it made me feel big and important, like a superstar. And I didn't want to leave you without a shadow, Boris, so I gave you mine. I kind of switch swapped. Hmm. Hmm. Boris would really like the switch swap switched back. Vernon thinks that right now probably would be a good time to scurry home. Uh oh. That's Vernon inside his home. But look at his shadow. Boris's shadow is too far big to fit through the door. Vernon squishes and squeezes and squashes it, but it just won't budge. This might be a slight problem, as Vernon loves his mouse house. He just finished decorating. And if having this enormous shadow means he can't putter about at home, then what's the point? You see, it's just not easy being a tiny pink mouse all the time. And having Boris's marvelous shadow meant that everybody took Vernon seriously for a change. You couldn't possibly understand Boris. He squeaks oh so quietly. But Boris knows exactly how it feels. It's not nice to be snickered at or squeaked at and ignored, you know? It made Boris feel terribly small and all alone. Perhaps if they both stopped worrying about silly shadows, they could concentrate on more important things, like having fun together. What do you think? Would that be better? First things first, to get Vernon out of this pickle, Vernon pushes and Boris pulls. The shadow stretches like a giant rubber bam until bing, toppily, timbily, tumbly, bump, poof. Not exactly easy peasy, but the result is spot on. Look, they're back together with their own shadows. Vernon is loving being foot loose and fancy free again, and he has a new spring in his step. This is because being with both his own shadow and Boris means double the fun. Now Vernon feels even better than a superstar and more like a super duper star. And to be honest, lugging that big bulky shadow around was a touchy thing. Perhaps a nice cup of tea followed by a little snooze will do the trick. Now that is what Boris calls a pretty perfect plan. One slurpy slip later, Boris clambers up into his favorite pillow. This time his shadow is too sleepy and sticking like glue, so there will be no prowling around and getting into trouble with a certain mischievous little mouse. And that's the end. Oh, Boris in the wrong shadow. Well, I hope you enjoyed all of our stories today about shadows and colors. I want to thank the Leaki Woods and Art Museum for taking us on that field trip. I hope you're able to stop by and view their current exhibitions going on now until June 5th. Well, thanks again. We'll see you next time.